Hello, this is Clayton Balmas, and I'm your teacher today here in our audio classroom with Synmax University, available at SynmaxPerformanceLubricants.com. Today we've got a presentation which was created by Aeromotive Research and Development Group, and it's called uh, Race Engine Oil Filtration Presentation. Uh, the correct oil filter selection will increase engine maintenance and oil durability uh, performance. Now here in front of you, uh, you know, on the right, you've got one of the best designed 100% filtration uh, uh, oil filters uh, available. That's a spin-on. And on the left, you see on the top one of the most sophisticated fuel-injected England uh, engines designed and built in England, hand-built. And below, we've got your Extreme Duty uh, LS short track engine. So these theories will apply. I don't care if you're in Europe or you're in the United States or anywhere around the world. What I'm going to share with you for performance racing, uh, these theories are going to really work for you. So I hope that you enjoy this presentation uh, to listen to it as much as I enjoy sharing it with you. So let's go for a ride and uh, see what we can find out. Now, in an OE full flow system, th this is what, would, what I would call your factory you know, with the oil pump in the engine, all right? And um, in an OE, what we call a full flow system is where in which all the oil from the oil pump ma must pass through the oil filter, okay? Now, in a full flow system, uh, filters must provide low oil flow restriction, uh, reduced cavitation, and maximum filtration with what we call single pass efficiency. In general, this means the filter must or should remove about 99% of the damaging dirt, contamination, and grit from the oil, hopefully the first time around. Now, to ensure the supply of oil to lubricate the engine under all conditions, as you can see, a pressure regulation valve will be closed. However, when the filter becomes plugged uh, with contaminants and too restrictive, the oil will flow uh, through the regulation valve and just directly to the engine. All right. Now we're going to get into about the oil filter regulators inside of the filters in a minute. Now in high performance oil filtration, all right, one of the theories that we learned, especially in our what we call our short track racing, was that people wanted to have inline screen filters and, and, and things like this. And um, the fact of life is that always use a spin-on paper filter as a primary filtration before the engine. Nothing can replace the amount of filtration element a paper filter can provide. Now for dry sump oil systems, you may use an inline screen type filter on the return side. Some guys use an Oberg, some guys use a Peterson, whatever. And if you use an Oberg, please clean it out often along with your Peterson. Now here's another thing on the remote filter warning. <laughs> Double check to make sure the in is going in the in and the out is going on the out or else you're going to have what Steve Matchett in Formula One, uh, the former uh, crew chief for Michael Schumacher said, kablamo. And he says, will that happen? Well, I guarantee you there's going to be somebody who listens to this and says, wait a minute, we better make sure. And I'm telling you, it's going to save you a rebuild. All it takes is about two minutes and you're done. So please check that out if you have a remote filter location. One of the things we need to do is we have to match the filter type to the oil that we have. Um, engine performance can always increase from increased, can benefit from increased oil flow. Now, one of the things on restrictors, all right, ra professional race engines, always would have what they call uh, internal oil restrictors within the oil lines or in the internal engine design. Like if you had a bush or what we call the bush motor or cup motor or whatever, um, uh, you know, the oil, you'd restrict the oil going into the valve covers or you'd restrict the oil going into certain parts. So we already have that. So don't worry about that part. Use the highest gallon per minute design filter to increase the rate of oil volume or flow without sacrificing filtration. Now we're going to get into some ideas at the end of this presentation I think you're going to appreciate. 
Now, here's one of the things. A standard OE filter, all right, original equipment filter, is not designed for racing conditions, okay? Um, you never want to use in a racing situation. On the bottom, you'll see on this filter, you got a big spring in metal. I love this design. That's 100% filtration. I, we, I, our organization spent a lot of time in oil filter design and performance, and you want 100% filtration. Why? Because here's what happens. The oil comes from the outside, and then it shoves through the filter, and then it goes into the cone, and then it goes back up. All right? It goes from the outside to the end. Okay? Now, here's the deal. If you've got an oil bypass a uh, uh, little valve on the bottom that, by the way, opens up at like 10 or 15 PSI, that thing is going to fluctuate, and it's going to really ruin your day when you've got 50 weight oil on a 9,000 uh, RPM engine, okay, like in a dirt car. But what you want to do is eliminate the variables. You want 100% filtration because if the oil goes around the side and then it tries to loop back in, oil is going to take the least part or path of resistance. So if you don't force it to go through the filter, guess what? It ain't going to go through the filter. So about 60 to 70, uh, sometimes 80% of the oil is just going to run right straight through. Maybe a third of it gets filtered. You cannot afford that. You cannot afford micro uh, filtration, pieces of filter, pieces of metal, pieces of garbage getting flushed back into the engine. You need 100% filtration. Okay? So that's what I want to tell you. Uh, another thing we have to learn is we have to match the filter to the type of oil, whether it's a pure synthetic or what. Now, we've obviously, we've got our group twos, threes, fours, our aerospace oils, and our fives, which has a lighter base. What I wanted to share with you is this, all right? If you've got like a old heavy duty diesel type, you know, 40, 50 weight, I mean, it can shove itself through just about anything because they're really heavy molecules and there's a lot of density. A synthetic molecule doesn't have that kind of density and it needs a greater gallon per minute to flow through the filter, okay? Because um, we're going to get into cavitations in a minute. So the less restriction we have, the better. Now, here. Here's why we want to increase our oil flow volume, not necessarily our pressure, because when the engine revs up, it'll create its own pressure. So we want to have as much flow as possible. When we do that, here's what's going to happen. Your, your oil durability performance will increase. Your oil pressure will improve at your lower temperatures at about 3 to 5 psi. Your oil temperatures will increase about three to six degrees. The oil volume flows faster, allowing the oil to physically disperse heat quicker. Oil spends less time cavitating and churning, building heat as it is restricted within the oil pump area before the filter. It's like this. I know that we've got a full flow filter here, all right, in, in, in this essence here. But here's the deal. If the oil coming up from wherever the source is, dry or wet, something, when it's coming through and then the oil filter isn't flowing enough oil, it's going to back up, it's going to stay in the pump longer, and it's going to cavitate it, and it's going to churn it, and it's going to build foam. You're not going to have full pressure for you to get into the filter. So one of the things that you need to do is find the most less restrictive and yet maximum uh, filtration that you can for the filter. Now we've got some theories at Synmax University that we've worked out on this for your paper spin on filter. And I know you're going to say, wait a minute, why do I need a big diesel truck filter when I only got maybe a three-quarter or a one-inch hole? Well, yeah, there is some theory there. But here's the thing I want to listen, you to listen to. Would it be better if I had 60 micron holes like is in some racing synthetic media? which won't filter as much? Or would it be better to have double the media with a 30 micron hole? All right? So would you rather have, let's say, example, 500 
um, 60 micron holes or a thousand 30 micron holes that are tighter. For me, I'd rather have the thousand 30 micron holes. Why? Because you'll have more paper element, you'll be flowing it through better. One of the things you need to know is that just a quarter of an inch, okay, in the whole design of the filter is going to improve the filtration performance about 20 to 30 percent just that little bit okay and uh, so it's going to take a little work but I j I'm just here to open your eyes to that all right now another thing you have to look at if you if you only can use the filters that you have is look inside the filter and never use a filter with a straight seam going down all right. Always use a filter with a twisted heavy-duty seam. All right, because the twisted seam increased uh, increases the inside filler filter element cone to withstand extreme duty conditions, especially if you got a heavy weight oil in a cold startup. Because sometimes bigger is better. All right, and the smallest improvements for in and out hole size makes a difference, like I shared before. But well, let's look at this just for a minute. If I had a straight seam and I had all the pressure crushing it, you know, high RPMs or whatever you got, and it's crushing it, it's going to go right for that seam and it's going to burst it. No, it's not. Yes, it is. But if we take what I call the diesel tech heavy duty technology theory, which is, well, if I had 40 weight oil at 40 below zero and I started my truck, and I had to move that heavy, heavy oil through, and it was going to crush, how would I design it? Now, instead of having one seam, whatever, we have got multiple twisting. So we've got multiple, multiple angles for it to handle the crushing effect. So long story short, say, Clayton, how do I figure that out? Look in your damn filter, all right? <laughs> Get a flashlight. Look in there. You know? It's going to save the day, all right? And by the way, I was going to say, sometimes a good old heavy-duty truck filter will do just as good as your racing filters. <laughs> if it'll work, hey, save half the money. Now, here's one thing I was going to share, share with you. Now, I know these are motorcycle filters, but here is the very same filter. And we didn't cut up a bunch of car filters. But here we've got different thicknesses of filtration, different springs, different medias on what we're trying to do. And everybody would think, you know, you got different qualities of gaskets, different qualities of things. So what I'm trying to share with you is this. Don't always think the brand name is going to do it for you. Please, all I'm trying to do here is enlighten you to educate yourself to see how do I get the maximum filtration with 100% filtration, with the maximum amount of flow, with a twisted cone on the inside that's heavy duty to take what I needed to do and to try to be as economic and efficient as possible. So, as I said, these are the things that we're trying to achieve. 100% filtration, a larger hole in and out size in the filter, the largest filter element available, premium design twisted seam to provide you the highest oil volume flow. Why? so that you don't have cavitation in the oil. Uh, what's that going to do for me? You're probably going to get about three more pounds of oil pressure, and it's going to run three, three degrees cooler to fit the specific application. Now, as I said, if you want some alternatives, which we spent a long time to figure out, you can give us a call at Synmax University at SynmaxPerformanceLubricants.com. So I wanted to thank you for the time that we spent together and uh, hope that you're able to learn a couple things. Maybe I got you thinking. Okay, that's what we were supposed to do. So this is Clayton Balmas with uh, Synmax University here at SynmaxPerformanceLubricants.com, and I look forward to uh, seeing you at our next session. Bye now. For technical test and brochure information on how the Aerospace Advantage for Motorsports can work for your race team or commercial needs, go to Synmax Performance Lubricants dot com